What's up everybody? I'm back. I am driving to my mom's house. Again, because still we gotta do some more computer work for. So uh, this is not a driving to work video, this is a driving to my mom's house video. First we gotta say what's up to my main man, Ludwig. Ludwig, what's up, dude? What's up, dude? Gotta go to grandma's. Gotta... Okay, here we go. So I guess there's something I want to talk about, and I'm going to make another Sam Harris video because I, I just like Sam Harris, and I like making these Sam Harris videos. And the newest episode was called Searching for Truth, or something around that I don't remember, but the guest is a guy named Sean Carroll, and he's been on the podcast before, and just right off the bat, I love Sam Harris. Uh, he's a good writer, he's, a, he's, a, he's very smart, but in terms of intelligence and who's smarter, Sean Carroll might be an order of magnitude smarter. Um... It goes back to the Ezra Klein kind of interview where, where Sean even said, well, you know what, am I inferior to uh, John Van Neumann because I got a lower IQ and then Ezra Klein didn't answer. And I think Sean did this, or I think Sam did this on purpose because these are the types of, of episodes that we like to listen to as Sam Harris fans, as core audience. And I'll consider myself a core audience member. This is what I like to listen to, one that is very information dense where Sam is talking to somebody smarter than him about stuff that he doesn't totally know. And we're able to kind of, as an audience, use Sam as our interlocutor to learn about something that we are all fascinated in, like physics. And no question, Sean Carroll is smarter than Sam Harris. This is a great episode. And I think he did that because I think he just posted this one after the Ezra Klein one because I think he knows, okay, well, the biggest losers in, in that Ezra Klein thing was for one Sam Harris. No question about it. They, they, Sam Harris did not handle it right. I'm not going to rehash the, the, the Ezra thing. You can go back to my videos and watch it. But Sam Harris, you know, he was the biggest loser in all that for sure. Uh, he looked bad in the public to, to outsiders. And then also he bored us, his core audience member, because Ezra Klein didn't say anything. Uh, so I think Sam Harris is like, let's get back to the way it's supposed to be. And that's what he did. So I'm just going to jump right into it. And I listened to it last night and it was so good, but very, very information dense. And up until this this episode, like, he had a guy named Eli something? Eli. I made some videos about him. That was the computer science guy. And he's the one that convinced Neil deGrasse Tyson that, that artificial intelligence, you can't just turn it off. And honestly, that was kind of, I kind of thought that he could just turn it off too. But he's the one that, that, that convinced Neil deGrasse Tyson he can't turn it off. And you know what? I guess I'm convinced too. Um, this episode was even harder to understand. And I didn't think there would be any subject tougher than computer science to understand. And it turns out it's physics. And knew that all along. But it's funny, I was always okay in physics, but and once you get to a level, it is it's impossible. And this guy, Sean Carroll, is a physicist and he's a real physicist. So let's just go through the episode real quick. Uh, I highly recommend it. Um, the first thing they talked about was a thing called natural or poetic naturalism, which I think is Sean Carroll's attempt to make physics fun. Like he's not a he's not a media guy. You can totally tell media guys are media guys that used to be scientists. Like, Sam Harris is a media guy that used to be a scientist, and Neil deGrasse Tyson is a media guy. Sean Carroll is not a media guy. He is a physicist. So I think that this part of his book, I mean, I didn't get it. I didn't get it. The first 30 minutes of this of this podcast was tough. And I think it sounded a little bit Deepak Chopra out of him, but we're not going to hold it against him because he's a physicist and he's got to make it fun for everybody. So don't worry about the the natural, or the poetic naturalism. I didn't get it. Then they moved on to what most people think of as the multiverse, but they called it the many worlds theory. And that is that is that that in this reality right now, I am driving to my mom's house with my dog Ludwig. Ludwig, what's up, dude? Uh, but in another one, or in another world, that dog is a German Shepherd, not a miniature Schnauzer. And it's just, it, it, I mean, it's a probability that's not zero, and certain stuff has other... I mean, some stuff has higher probabilities than others. And it's the multiverse theory that, that there's a multiverse, there's a universe out there in which something else, the exact same thing is happening, but a little bit different. And I never really got this one, and I still have never heard any physicist explain this well. Lawrence Krauss tried on the Sam Harris podcast. I couldn't get it. Then I listened to the Joe Rogan podcast, and Joe Rogan pretended like he, he knew what he was talking about, but he didn't. You can tell. And I'm like, all right, here, here we go, Sean Carroll. Let's see if we can, let's see if we can get this. And I didn't quite get it. Um, like I kind of get the basics of it, and I understand that 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 the reason why physicists believe it is because, or or they don't believe. Believe's not the right word. The reason physicists think it's true 
is because it makes the math easier to, it makes the math work and it makes it easier to understand. And I think at first I was just kind of skeptical because we were just getting done with, uh, with string theory, which, it, which, which that's the opposite. It's like, oh my goodness. So the knee jerk reaction to string theory was, uh, was the, was multiverse theory, it, which, which the math is easy. Like, oh, how convenient you guys. But you know what? If they say, they say it's probably true, then it's, it's probably true. And if the math makes sense that way, you can't argue with it. And uh, he goes through the multiverse, and then, and then what's called the, the wave function, which uh, I don't know if you've ever seen it. You probably shouldn't go watch it, but there's a YouTube video called What the Bleep Do We Know, in which there is one segment of that movie in which they had a cartoon that explained the double slit experiment, and it did a really good job explaining the experiment, like, on its own, like, just the cartoon itself, Dr. Quantum. I remember that, because I remember thinking, wow, that's amazing. And then I rewatched that this morning just to see if there was anything kind of shady about it. And that cartoon itself, they, they explained it perfectly and so well. But the implications of that, they messed up on. And it was just a good piece of media. And I think What the Bleep Do We Know kind of kind of fooled everybody on this topic. And, it, you know, it's similar to, like, me, people forget how powerful media is. It's kind of like going to go see a Michael Moore movie. And then when you're walking out of the movie theater, like, say you're watching that one about the healthcare system, and then you're walking out of the, the healthcare si out of the movie theater angry, like, dude, the 9-11 firefighters didn't get medical treatment and they had to go to Cuba to get it? Wow, that is so bad. I'm going to do something about this. I'm going to do something about this. And then three hours later, you totally forget. That first little bit, that first three hours of you getting jacked up, that is good media. That is good media making, and it happens when you're watching movies, it happens when you're watching documentaries, it happens when you're watching everything. And what the bleep do we know? It was good media. It, I mean, it got me for it got me for a little bit. Um, and, and, and then so basically, he explained the double slit, and then the, just the superposition, and then one thing that was new, which was the electrons turning counterclockwise and clockwise. That that I had never heard, but I still didn't get it. And then when one of the question and and then one of the questions in the Q and A, a young woman asked a, a question about that, and she seemed to know a little bit more than me. The question was pretty good, but I still didn't understand any of it. So I still don't have uh, Sean Carroll. Nice job. You didn't get me. Uh, let's move on. Um, and then they kept on bringing up this this thing called the Devil's Satan's Lair, or Satan's Cave, or something. And this is how you know that, that Sean's not a media guy, because if you're going to keep on going back to that as like as an analogy or as a comparison or whatever, he, however he was using it, you've got to explain it to the audience first. He, he was talking about it as if we already all knew. And that confused the crap out of me. And then we move on, we go to uh, values and free will. And this is where Sam Harris and Sean and Carol, I don't know exactly why they disagree on stuff, but there's definitely disagreements here. And... John Carroll is just smart. There, there's no other way to describe it. He had a comeback for everything. He's a fast talker, and he just, he's just, bam. He's like, if you're playing tennis, he was he was returning those serves and, and just playing great. And uh, and Sam got his piece out, and when he they first went to free will, which I find interesting, Sam talked. He was he was doing, like, paragraph-long long questions, and I got lost in the questions. And it's because he knows where they disagree because they have a past together. But I got kind of lost in the questions. But but Sean Carroll definitely did not, and he had answers for everything. And it was just great. And this is a, this is where I want to go back and re-listen to it because I, I didn't quite follow the plot totally. Uh, but yeah, that was that was really great. And Sean Carroll did great. And this was just a, a great episode overall. And gotta have him back. Um, you know, this is what we like about Sam Harris. It's just him him talking to somebody smarter than him. Like, it's kind of like we're at one level of understanding stuff, Sam's above us, and then there's people way above Sam, and then Sam kind of figures it out for us, and then explains it to us, the plebeians. And uh, this is why I like Sam. And uh, what, uh, what other highlights were there? This guy, Sean Carroll, was definitely funny. And uh, a couple times, you hear Sam Harris ask what seems like a simple question, like, like, like he asked, um, if you were Saddam Hussein, it wouldn't be your fault that you were Saddam Hussein. And I, as a listener, was like, oh, yeah, this is a good question. That's true. That's true. If I was Saddam Hussein, I wouldn't be Saddam Hussein. And Sean Carroll just immediately, immediately said, to me, that question makes no sense. Or to me, that sentence makes no sense. And I was like, whoa, how dare you? Sam Harris, you're going to say that to Sam Harris? And and sure enough, Sam Harris changed his question around. He had a caveat to it. And it's just, it just you don't hear that very often. And Sean Carroll was no pushover. And this was just a great episode. And it just... So awesome to get the Ezra Klein debacle in our in our rear rear view uh, mirror because there is absolutely no value to anybody 
other than, than Ezra Klein when that kind of stuff goes down. And uh, let's hope Sam learned his lesson. And, and it realizes that people are just trying to, they're media people, and they're just trying to take advantage. I mean, bottom tier media people are going to be going after him for the rest of his life. And I know that he, he, he thinks that he's a, he thinks that he's a scientist, or he thinks that he's a writer, or whatever he's doing. Well, he, he's a writer, and he's a multimedia producer. The rest of your life, Sam Harris, people are going to be going after you because they want your audience. So you're just going to have to learn how to deal with it. Um, but a good way to do that is just ignore bottom tier writers. Just ignore them. And, uh, you know, if they're, if they're slandering you in public, then I don't know, it's hard, I don't know what, what we're supposed to do, but Sam, don't ever worry about Ezra Klein ever again. It's in your re rearview mirror. You learned your lesson. I saw you on Joe Rogan. Get Majid Nawaz back on Joe Rogan without you. That I was a little critical on because Majid, I hate to say it, might be more interesting than you, Sam Harris. He was imprisoned in Egypt. Like, why don't we hear more of that story? Sam Harris is butting in saying, yeah, but I got to fight with Ezra Klein. Dude, let Majid talk next time you're on Joe Rogan. And let's hope Joe Rogan just gets Majid on for good. Because that is a perfect, that is a perfect, you know, I'm just going to take it right here. I think there might be a cop. Anyway, Sam, you're, the, you're, you're great. Uh, Majid might be cooler than you. And you know what? He's a good looking guy, too. Good looking guy. Um, really like Majid. Anyway, thanks for listening, everybody. Went a little bit too long. Sean Carroll, you're the man. Uh, Sam Harris, back on the rails. Way to go. Dog is barking at another dog. Luke, stop barking at another dog. Stop barking. He's getting all jacked up. All right, later, guys.